Ro Khanna and Van Jones or pleading, pleading with you. We'll start with Ro Khanna first in reference to uh, Biden 2024. Uh, he is being confronted about Michigan voters uh, not willing to support uh, Joe Biden. Let's go ahead and get into that piece here. Joining me now, California Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna, who visited uh, Michigan this week to speak with Arab American leaders in the community about what they are worried about. Congressman, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for making time for us. So let me start there with the conversation you had uh, with Michigan voters. And aside from uh, a ceasefire, tell us a little bit about what the leaders, the community leaders, the voters are asking for and what will it take to get back on board with President Biden? And then the first thing that you realize is the deep hurt, the deep sense of anger, the deep sense of grief and loss that is present in Dearborn and the communities. Some people talked about knowing family members, intergenerational, three generations of family members that have been killed. Someone talked about how she herself went to UNRWA schools and UNRWA provided food for her mother to survive. This is a deeply emotional issue. And first, we need to have an end to the war and then a period of healing before we can even make a political case. Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Dingell uh, responded to questions today about the growing progressive movement urging voters to vote uncommitted on Tuesday. Let me play you a part of that response. This is, I think, a, a very high stakes moment. I am encouraging people to cast an affirmative vote for President B Biden. I understand the pain that people are feeling and I'll continue to work to build bridges with um, folks in, in all of these communities. I just want to pause for a second and, and add something here. No, she doesn't understand the pain that they're experiencing. She can't possibly understand the pain there. I don't even understand the pain. I, I, I sympathize, but I can't fully understand it the way that someone who is Palestinian, you know, understands it, especially those that had family members in Gaza. No, I, I don't fully understand. Gretchen Whitmer doesn't fully understand. If she fully understood, she wouldn't be sitting there telling you, I'm encouraging you still to vote affirmative for Joe Biden situation in Gaza, I could go on about at length. Uh, and we've got to find a solution that brings a ceasefire. Uh, the president's working on a temporary ceasefire now. And the, I will say that his White House has conversations now ongoing with the senior leadership of this community that I think are very, very important and critical. Give me your thoughts on that, Congressman. I mean, given that you have called for an immediate ceasefire um, and for the United States to place conditions on aid to Israel, why is this president so reluctant to meet members of your party, of his party and constituents somewhere in the middle and not be where he is on this issue so far to the right? Oh, look, I think Debbie Dingell is playing a very constructive role, but uh, we need a change in policy. There needs to be an immediate ceasefire with a release of all uh, hostages. Uh, there needs to be the resumption of aid to Gaza, including aid to UNRWA. Uh, and the president, I think, has an opportunity to be a peacemaker. He needs to say clearly that the occupation could end and uh, convene a summit with Egypt, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Palestinian authorities to actually get to a recognition of the Palestinian state, which the United States hasn't done yet uh, in the UN and uh, in, uh, in in the world opinion, and to, to make that a reality. I, I'm hopeful uh, that we will be able to convey to the president and his team that the only thing that will move the needle here is not uh, slogans, it's not messaging, it's not uh, the poll tested phrases, but is actually a shift uh, in policy. Let me pause here for a second because I want to highlight something that he just said. Hold on to that piece where he said, you know, the, the only thing that's going to make a, a shift here is going to be, you know, the policy, right? He said, not messaging. Hold on to the piece, not messaging. That'll be important with the Van Jones segment. That being said, I want you guys to remember Ro Khanna didn't even want to call for a ceasefire either. He repeatedly pushed back on calling for a ceasefire 
when other colleagues of his had are already done so, right? So what forced him to do that? It was actually one of his constituents on a conference call that was recorded and people shared it on social media. I saw it on Twitter where it was one of his own constituents who told him that she said that she was Jewish and she said she will do everything that she can to make sure that his presidential ambitions are ruined in the future if he does not take the right position on this. Because she said that what they were doing in Israel to the Palestinian people, she said it was 100 percent ethnic cleansing and that he should know better. Some of you remember that call that we played on here. So he actually got pushed back from his constituents, but more so the ones that had louder voices and ones that have donated to him before and made it very clear that they would ruin his presidential ambitions. Then the next thing I knew he called for a ceasefire. So just keep that in mind. Where do you see the uncommitted vote go after the primary? Are you worried about November? Because it, it, as you said, this is to send a message to President Joe Biden. If the number, and I don't know if there is a number out there that is supposed to be a threshold that would get the White House's attention, but is there a stated number that they are trying to go for or a percentage of the population that they want to have in order for this to be a serious cause of concern for the White House? And are you concerned about about it in November. I mean, let me first say that if I were a Michigan voter, I would vote for the president because I believe he represents a much better chance of peace in the Middle East and justice than Donald Trump. Pause. You don't have to vote at all. Right. So, so, so for the people who say, well, I'm going to vote for Joe Biden, like Rokan, I'm going to vote for Joe Biden because he represents a better chance of peace in the Middle East than Donald Trump. You don't have to vote for either one of them. That's the kicker, folks. Ro Khanna, his job is to make you, notice what he said, his job is to still make you believe you gotta pick one of these guys or else. No, you don't. You really don't have to pick either one of them. There are other people running outside the duopoly that don't take the same position that Biden does or Donald Trump does. Both Trump and Biden support Israel. Biden has already got us in multiple conflicts in the Middle East as it is. But both of them support Israel. Don't forget it was under Donald Trump's presidency that he was the one that actually moved the capital. So remember that. So don't, don't fall for that. Don't ever fall for that. You don't have to pick either one of them. You don't have to vote for these people at all. But what is unconscionable is some of the beltway trying to shame those uh, who are voting uncommitted. I mean, these are folks who I may not share their view on, but they're not engaged in throwing paint on limousines. They're not engaged in vandalism. They're not engaged in, uh, in violence. They're engaged in the most American tradition, which is to use their ballot, the right to vote, to send a message. And I don't, I think it would be a mistake to look at this from a spreadsheet way and see a tally up how many are uncommitted. I can tell you if the president who's an extraordinary politician spent a half a day in Dearborn, he would conclude the same thing that I have, that we have a lot of work to do to re-earn the trust of uh, this community, that we must earn the trust. The consultants are underestimating it. They say one or 2%. What they don't understand is these are folks active on TikTok. These are folks making phone calls. Uh, I think there is a misunderstanding of the modern Democratic coalition. It's not just Muslim and Arab American votes. They're voters of color. They're young voters. They're progressives. Uh, and to think you're going to make up for this with suburban Republican voters is wrong. You need a change in strategy, uh, regardless of the election results on Tuesday. Yeah, and as the mayor of Dearborn told us, uh, he's never seen an election in which voters are blamed for a candidate losing. So let's hope uh, that does not happen in the event that that uncommitted number is substantial and certainly one that hopefully gets the attention of the presidents to change course uh, on Israel. Okay, let me just add something here for a second, because I know some people may be wondering, what's the big deal? Why does it matter if they're voting uncommitted in the primary? How does that actually really help Joe Biden? It could hurt him in the general. Because the thing is, is that if you go back and you look at the election, the primary election between Jimmy Carter and Ted Kennedy, uh, back when the election process was a little bit more fair, not completely, but a little bit more fair, 
Ted Kennedy actually was able to win states in the primary. You hear this? Like Ted Kennedy actually won states in the primary against Jimmy Carter. And it's not like he won like three, four or five. Ted Kennedy actually won, if I remember correctly, I think he won at least 12 states in the primary against him. Right. So what happened to Jimmy Carter in the general election? He lost. Who did he lose to? Ronald Reagan. So that's what the fear is. Here's my thing. If it were me and if I were in their position, regardless at this point in time, regardless if Joe Biden calls for a ceasefire, I still don't think they should vote for him. For all of you that are in Michigan, all of you that are you know Muslim voters in Michigan, I don't think you should vote for him, period. I don't think you should vote for him in the primary. I don't think you should vote for him in the general. I think you'd be better off just going to the polls in Michigan, voting for the ballot measures for your state because Michigan will have ballot measures this year. And other than that, you can leave the presidential spot blank. At this point in time, you don't need to vote for him. This whole call from Rashida Tlaib where she was like, you know, vote for uncommitted in the primary. No, nah, if you were serious, you would have been telling people to vote uncommitted in the general. And I'm not going to tell people in Michigan not to go vote at all. They should still go vote, vote for those ballot measures. But when it comes to the president, you ain't got to vote for Trump or Biden at all. At all. Now, Rokana told you it's not about the message. It's about changing policy. I say this because Van Jones and his crew are actually going to say something different. This is actually not the link I wanted. Sorry. Actually, no, we're going to go to this link first. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day. I'm not ready for Van Jones just yet. We got to go to this link here. Then we'll come to Van Jones. But still hold on to that part from Rokana. Because I want you to hear from some of the voters in Michigan about what they had to say, whether or not they will support Joe Biden. Cause I think the CNN host here, MSNBC host here, I think she's a little taken aback by their comments. Listen to Is this. Is there a pathway forward for you with Biden? Oh, absolutely not. You cannot keep killing people with our money and just keep thinking that, oh, we are stupid enough to elect you again because we'll fall in line. We'll forget. How can you, how can, like, this is an insult to me as a voter. For Very you, hard. Biden has a pathway forward. Biden has a pathway forward. It's not and what saying, does that look like? That is him calling for a permanent and immediate ceasefire. The straightforward, simple answer for the Biden administration is push for a ceasefire, stop aiding Israel in their war crimes, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you there are enough people who would be willing to deal with it and vote for the man. It is... Let me pause here for a second. So he was willing to give, but this woman right here, I want everyone to hear this woman again, because I feel like this is the stance that all of us should take. Everybody should take regardless, especially for those of you that are African-American voters and you're Democrat loyalists and you're like, well, I got to go vote for the Democratic Party because the Republican Party is so much worse. I just want to tell you, if, if you take a look back and you realize that the Democratic Party has actually not done anything policy wise that's actually helped your community, if you're looking around and you still see abandoned houses in your damn neighborhood, but you got people coming to you telling you that you need to go out there to the polls and you need to support your mayor and all these people that you've been electing over and over again, and they just let the communities go to shit. Hello, Baltimore. Hello, DC. I'm talking to you and I got family in Baltimore, so don't come for me. Okay. I'm talking to you. If you're looking around in your community and you still see an abandoned houses, you see the schools are still falling apart. You see, they still got liquor stores on every damn corner, but you go over to the white side of town and they got juice bars. You follow me? You follow me? You see, there's no gym, no recreation, anything healthy for you as a community in the neighborhood. The only thing they bring in is poison. 
Things are, are going to continue to destroy your body and destroy the community. Meanwhile, if you go to the white neighborhood, everything they bring into the neighborhood is to make them healthy. Then you already see the game that is in front of you. So my plea to you is to do the same thing that this woman is doing right here. You don't have to go vote for these people. You don't owe them anything. The same thing she said here. Is there a pathway forward for you with Biden? Oh, absolutely not. You cannot keep killing people with our money and just keep thinking that, oh, we are stupid enough to elect you again because we'll fall in line. We'll forget. How can you, how can, like, this is an insult to me as a voter. For you, Biden. And it should be an assault to anybody who has continued to support these people and they continue to just do this in your face, in your face. It has happened over and over again. Biden has a pathway forward. Biden has a pathway forward. It's not and what saying, does that look like? That is him calling for a permanent and immediate ceasefire. The straightforward, simple answer for the Biden administration is push for a ceasefire, stop aiding Israel in their war crimes. And I guarantee you, there are enough people who would be willing to deal with it and vote for the man. It is, in so many words, insane mm. to me to have the Democratic Party and the Biden administration sit here and essentially say, if Trump happens, it's your fault. If you don't want a Trump presidency then, are you not worried about what he could do domestically yeah. to this country? I am. You see this? See, this is the game that they continue to play with you. Are you worried what he can do domestically? Don't know about you, but I've been worried since 2021. I've been worried under Joe Biden. I've been worried under Trump. I've been worried under Joe Biden. I've been worried under Obama. Some of you were worried under Bill Clinton. It doesn't matter if it's Democrat or Republican. Economically, that's what that poll is about. I want you to think about that. The poll that's attached to the top of the live chat. Out of the four presidents that I've named, those are the ones I'm old enough to remember. Which one of those presidents do you feel helped you out the most economically? You personally, not what the GDP was, et cetera. You know, it's like a vaccine. I'm willing to take short-term pain for a long-term gain. I'm willing to uh, uh, let go of Joe Biden and oppose Joe Biden, make him a one-term president, punish Joe Biden by making him a one-term president and pairing his loss with the genocide in Gaza. Why does our democracy, why is having a Trump presidency more important than those people's lives? Mm -hmm. Why is our democracy more important than thousands of men, women and children being killed? That's a really good question. I can answer it for her because the host isn't going to tell her the truth, but I can tell her why. Because of money. That's why. We're going to bring up this segment here from Van Jones. Jesus Christ. Because you see how they're trying to put the blame on Muslim voters? Brace yourself because they're trying to blame black men. Here it comes. I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. The mugshot, we've all seen the mugshot. And I corrected this earlier a couple days ago. I don't know anybody saying that you're being discriminated against. I've heard people say they feel like it's a witch hunt but I haven't heard black people say you're being discriminated against. So let's not go that far. And you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. And uh, Jake asked uh, James Clyburn uh, about that. Also, President Biden had said something recently. He said Donald Trump has been showing black Americans his true colors for years an incompetent anti-black tyrant who holds us to such low regard that he publicly dined with white nationalists a week after declaring his 2024 candidacy. Come November, no matter how many disingenuous voter engagement events he attends, black Americans will show Donald Trump 
we know exactly who he is. And all of those things that he said, Joe Biden said about Donald Trump also apply to Joe Biden because Joe Biden has also dined with white nationalists and Joe Biden has also had a racist history. What, what do you think of, of the support that he's been getting? I, I don't think it's real. And I, I don't know if anybody else would disagree with me at this table. I do think that there are two different things that could be true at the same time. One is that the Democratic Party um, has for a very long period of time taken black voters for granted. And there is a question right now about the energy that is behind Joe Biden from black voters and supporting him in November. Now, this is Bakari Sellers, a.k.a. Bakari Sellout. So he's one of the people that heavily attacked Bernie Sanders campaign. Then he went on to be a part of Nina Turner's campaign. So he's not a progressive. I don't want you to see him and think he's like this progressive Democrat. He's not. He's another one from South Carolina. The black candidates that they get from South Carolina just end up being a bunch of Uncle Toms. Jim Clyburn, Bakari Sellers. Boy, I tell you. That is true. What's also true and can be said is that Donald Trump is a racist who utilizes racism as a political currency. I can remember going back in studio in, in um, 2016 when Jake Tapper was interviewing him about David Duke and he act like he didn't know who David Duke was on the eve of the Mississippi primary. The fact that he keeps, um, and even Lindsey Graham said it tonight, that you know black, black Americans have a propensity uh, to commit crimes, et cetera, to hypersexualize us, to make, to hypercriminalize us, to keep uh, falling into these tropes. That is the type of racism that plays to the base of his party. He says these things to black voters, to their faces, the ones who are ignorant enough to be in that room, not talking to them. That's what people miss. Donald Trump is not talking to black voters when he goes down these tropes. Let me pause for a second, because a lot of these things apply to Joe Biden, too. OK, let's remember Joe Biden and his good racist friend, uh, Strum Thurman. Let's remember him. Let's remember Joe Biden hanging out with Bird. Joe Biden hung out with a lot of white racists. Right. But Bakari Sellers isn't going to mention that. Bakari Sellers isn't going to mention the crime bill. Isn't going to mention any of those things. Now, he said that Donald Trump has racist tropes. He's not going to mention Joe Biden said he didn't want his kids to grow up in a racial jungle. He's not going to mention Joe Biden sat up there and said to Charlemagne the God, if you got to figure out if you're going to vote for me or Donald Trump, you ain't black. Both of them have done it. Both of them. That's the thing. Bakari is just playing his part. He's actually talking to white voters and to his base to churn them up and build in a lot of the resentment that we see. A lot of the things that we see that are going on in this country about people who are coming out is because there's some fear that they're being replaced either by black or brown voters. And when you see him talking down to black folk in their face, there is a large swath of the American public who says, I like the way that sounds. And that's the currency that he uses. So I think two things can be true. The Democratic Party has been on the, laying on their asses for too long when it comes to, Demo to, to black voters. That is true. You're seeing that catch up with them. And Donald Trump's a racist. Yeah, but what explains, what explains, I mean, I, I don't, far be it for me to explain, you know, African-American voting, right? Mm -hmm. but, but then don't. <laughs> this is the guy that reminds me of Hank from Breaking Bad. He comes on here every now and what, then. What explains his rise in popularity? And, and every poll you see, something has to be, it has to account for that, right? Well, I, a, a couple things. First of all, Everything that you just said is correct, which is why the vast majority of black people, male, female, every category, are going to vote against Donald Trump again. Correct. So that's, that's, that's the big solid rock. But there is this margin that's beginning to waver and beginning to move, which is what you're talking about. Um, and I think that there are some people, look, I mean, when he, when he holds up the sneakers and does that stuff, I mean, Trump, I mean, that stuff is, is, is horrifying to, to anybody with good sense. But wh where is the motion coming from? Um, I think there's some frustration in the Democratic Party that you're talking about, Bakari, that we've been taken for granted. That some of our issues didn't get taken seriously enough this time around, whether it's voting rights, whether it's police reform, et cetera. Um He's naming the easier positions, right? Okay, you, you, you notice what Van Jones does? This is how he gets to keep his spot on networks like CNN, right? He gets to pop in every now and then. He brings up voting rights and police reform, right? Okay. Why does it Van Jones mention reparations? Hmm? 
Would he still have that spot on CNN if he mentioned reparations? Because police reform, that's easy to mention. That's easy. The voting rights, easy to mention. But notice when it comes to black people, notice he won't mention reparations though. Even though there's an entire reparations movement happening across the country through different organizations. Won't mention that though. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some fatigue. And so, um, and I think you're starting to see that. I think there is this um, uh, weird nostalgia that is about, you know, well, d under Trump, uh, you know, the pre-COVID the economy was better. We got some criminal justice reform and some of the stimulus support was welcome. So what's actually happening though, is that there is an online influence campaign. Correct. Some of it I think is coming from Russia, China and Iran that is whipping up that, that conversation way in, unnaturally yeah, but, but let me uh, uh, negro please this has nothing to do with russia iran or china people have the nostalgia for the economy that we had prior to joe biden directly prior to him that has nothing to do with those countries it has nothing to do with online influence and it has everything to do with people looking at their bank statements, their bank accounts and their freaking wallets. It has everything to do with people looking at the prices when they go to the grocery store. But he really went there. You see, do you think that Van Jones doesn't know better? Do you think that he really buys this BS that he's saying? No, he knows better. He was once one of the radical activists that they talk about somebody gave him a suit and a tie and he decided he wanted to make more money and that's how he got where he is you don't get to sit there having received hundreds of thousands of dollars from jeff bezos he's not just going to give that to anyone he gave it to you to use you like a tool you fool so that's why Van Jones will be there as a mouthpiece. And to repeat the nonsense, everything is because of Russia, China, and Iran. No evidence, no details, just saying things, just because. And they'll allow it. And this is why your ratings are so low. This is why. A hot mess. Yes, okay, you have, you have a question, ahead, I want to answer ahead, it. Ahead. So, there's a solid block that's not going to move. There is some actual legitimate frustration and fatigue, but there's also, and we have to talk about it more, an online influence campaign designed to depress and distress black voters and to but split and to, and to split black how voters. About let, let, let the no, there's no campaign that was designed to split black voters. It's called the economy, stupid. It just, you know. Here we go again with the voters are not educated enough to understand what they're doing and what they're saying. They're being manipulated by people online. God forbid they actually check their bank statement. They're not intelligent enough to understand. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Let, 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 let me just look at poll numbers, uh, 2000, going back to 2008, seeing some sort of a shift among black men siding with the Republican Party. Uh, we put that up under, for McCain, 5%, Romney in 2012, 11%, Donald Trump 2016, 13%, Donald Trump 2020, 19%. Can I put it out there that it says black? Pause. So she is going to bring this up because I, I want to show you something, what they're trying to do, right? Black male support for GOP candidate. You see, they're trying to single out black men. I've seen them do this shit before. They've done this on MSNBC too. So black male support for 08 for John McCain was 5%. For 2012, for Mitt Romney was 11%. For Trump, for 2016 was 13%. And now what they're trying to point out is that for 2020 or for 2020 was 19%. What they're not showing is uh, for 2024, right? But Trump got an increase of black support from black men. But let me be clear about what they are trying to do. So get ready for this. If Donald Trump wins in November, 
they're going to blame black men. Just like Stacey Abrams blamed black men. Right? Because she lost. Get ready for it, folks. Because that's who they're going to put the blame towards. Because they know that when it comes to black women, because they are women, most likely they're going to vote towards reproductive rights, right? So most likely they're going to vote for the Democrat or not vote at all. But they are already uh, setting up the trap to target black men for the blame. So get ready, guys. Get ready because they're going to come for you. They're going to blame. Here it is. Two peeps. They're going to blame black men, the third party and independent candidates, and they might toss in Russia. We already know this game. Like male support. And one thing we're not acknowledging is the growing gender divide that is happening across the board with partisanship, that men in general are trending more Republican, yes. women in general, especially young women, are trending more Democratic, and that this is affecting. You could probably talk very similarly about Latino men, et cetera. Yes. So that's one thing. And the other thing is we do have a tendency to blow up this particular dialogue, which has been around for a very long time. There have always been black conservatives and they've always made a very similar argument, which is that the Democratic Party takes you for granted. I actually don't hear anything all that new in this, but I understand the, what you're saying about optics, which I think is important and to show yes. that I'm out here just saying whatever, you know, I'm not worried about microaggressions or wokeism or any of that stuff. I'm out here telling the truth. There could be lots of reasons why people might want to wear a Trump uh, mugshot shirt. Also, it doesn't necessarily letter, mean it doesn't mean the Trump curious are not the Trump committed. Yeah, and that's you hear what she's saying. So she's like, let me I'm sorry. Let me check these guys here. So she's reminding them there's always been black conservatives. Oh, boy. Just something to consider a chance the Trump message resonates with African-Americans. Well, Isn't there a chance? Of there course no. it is. No, no, but no, let's be See, Hank from Breaking Bad gets it. Here it is. Letter, 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 mean, letter, it doesn't mean the Trump curious are not the Trump committed. Yeah, and that's just chance, something to consider. There's a chance that the Trump message resonates with African-Americans. Hank from, okay, so the Hank stunt double from Breaking Bad he seems to get it. Very telling. Look at the look on Van Jones' face. Look at the look on Bakari Silver's face. <laughs> I did. She said Hank from Breaking Bad. He does remind me of Hank from Breaking Bad. Well, Isn't there a chance? Of there course no. it is. No, no, but no, let's no, be answer, realistic. No, no, but let's be realistic about what we're talking about. We're not talking about people just straight up waltzing over to Trump. We're talking about people who decide, I don't care enough about this election because I don't think either candidate will materially change my life. That is where what, the Trump curious the, becomes the more important. That's the, frustration that I, that's the frustration that I have because Joe Biden has done a great deal for people of color in this country. Here we go with the people of color. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Weren't they just talking about black voters? Here comes Bakari Sellers with people of color. They weren't talking about people of color. He's done separate things for separate groups. Don't get me wrong. Remember, he's done separate things for Asian Americans in this country. He's done things for other groups. They were not talking about them. This is one of the criticisms that people have sometimes when they say, when we're talking about something specifically for the black community, in comes the person that says, yes, well, people of color, the, the conversation was not about people of color. The conversation was about black voters. And here comes Bakari sellout to expand the field and say people of color. And why does he do that? Because he knows that Joe Biden hasn't done a lot for black people. So he has to expand it to people of color. Boy, I tell you. And the disconnect is the messaging around the successes that he's had. And the fact that they're not actually out there and they are, they're trying to now and they're getting around to that. I just, I just wanna say, 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 Go ahead. say one quick thing and I know I just want, want to get in. Um, there, one of the great achievements, I think, of uh, progressive uh, black leadership has been to hold the, the black and brown communities together 
despite immigration. And that is beginning to erode. In other words, there was a, in the 90s, especially in California, there's an attempt to pit black and brown together, saying the immigrants are taking black jobs in particular. And we beat that back. We said, we, we're, we're not going to let this economic argument put us in the camp of what we think is basically a fundamentally racist attempt to push brown people down and to create brown second class citizens. And I think that was a huge achievement. And people now take it for granted that black and brown people are going to vote together. Because of what's happened, it's very important, because of these Republican governors shipping immigrants into blue cities and they're landing in, in black communities and in, in, in places like New York and other places, black students are not able to go to schools and use facilities sometimes because this artificially manufactured conflict between black and brown folks yeah, at the grassroots level. I don't necessarily agree that there was a strong coalition between black and brown folk in this country as long as I can remember. I don't know what Van's talking about. I, I really don't know. This is not to say, you know, I had friends of all different races, but I, I was also a military kid. So we moved around a lot, all that jazz. You guys heard that story before. Anywho, I don't necessarily know if that is really true. And so I, I don't know, maybe Van Jones had a different experience but based on what I've seen, even when I lived in New York, I never really saw that as such. And that's not to say that people who were black and brown could not be, weren't friends. But I think when you're talking about community, that brings up a different, uh, it's a different element to a relationship. Because I can be friends with you, but that doesn't mean I consider you to be in community with me. And that doesn't mean you consider me to be in community with you. So this is why I'm like, I, I don't know what he's referring to. I don't, I don't know, man. Hold on a second. Shipped by Republican well, well, governors. Most well, of them are not transplanted as photo we, 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 can, we, can, we can argue about it. But, 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 but we can argue <laughs> well, about it. Well, then. But, <laughs> but, 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 but I think it's important now because the Obama coalition, and which you know more about than anybody else, and the Biden coalition assumed certain groups would stay together. And you are seeing some of that beginning to fray. We should be able to talk about. It. Can, can I yeah, say can one I, thing can, on this yeah. quickly? Um, because when I, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't remember. Terry said exactly. There's no black brown coalition where I live. Yeah, I mean, I just don't. I don't even remember this happening under the Obama administration. Like what he's saying, like there was this black brown energy. No, I don't remember that. I, I really don't. And I'm not trying to be an ass. But I just I do not remember that happening. I remember a bunch of black people going out and voting for Obama. I remember like black universities going out and vote for Obama and stuff like that. But after that, it wasn't like, hey, everybody, let's all just coalesce together and form community. Hell, what do you mean, Van? There are still communities in this country that won't even let black people live there as renters. OK, as renters. So I don't know what you're referring to in reference to this so-called coalition. But I want to hear from you guys. Van got to go. What do you think in reference to the four presidents that are listed in the poll? When was the economy best for you personally? Let's take a look at that poll. All right, it's 853 votes. I know some of you told me you didn't vote because there wasn't a none of the above option. Unfortunately, with YouTube polls, it only gives me four options, which kind of sucks, actually, to be honest. Which president has the best economy for you? George W. Bush, 16%. Donald Trump, 62%. Barack Obama, 19%. And Joe Biden, 4%. So I think what this poll proves is that I don't know what Van and them are talking about, but it proves that the economy has not been the best for people under Joe Biden. I mean, I put the, with the last four uh, presidents that we've had. So that just goes to show you once again, that's mainstream media uh, trying to uh, use propaganda against you.